As you are beginning your journey into learning about medical coding, you will find that we use several different code sets. So which is what and who is where and which is which? Each code set has a specific and different purpose. These code sets that we're going to discuss here today are all approved for use legally under HIPAA, which is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, and know how to spell that. It's 1P, 2 A's. Okay, so, and these are used to communicate very, very specific details about a patient's condition, why the patient needed care from a physician, and what the physician did for that patient during that encounter. So let's review. The first uh, code set that we're going to talk about are diagnosis codes, and we use the ICD-10-CM diagnosis code set. These codes explain why the physician cared for this patient. This is also known as reporting the medical necessity, that the physician is acting in accordance with the standards of care and that nothing is being done just to pad his pocket or to earn extra money or anything like that, that everything has a legitimate purpose. So ICD-10-CM codes, also known as diagnosis codes, explain why. As you begin to learn about ICD-10-CM diagnosis codes, you will find that they may have three characters, they may have four characters, they may have five characters, they may have six characters, or they may have seven characters. And I use the word characters because these codes are alphanumeric, which means they can use numbers or letters. It's all in the code set. ICD-10-CM diagnosis codes are used by all healthcare providers in all locations, all facilities, and everybody uses them. So that makes it easy because you know and, and you can know that you will be learning one diagnosis code system to report why the patient needed care and why the physician uh, provided that care. Now let's talk about procedure codes. Procedure codes report what was done for the patient or to the patient. Okay? And procedure codes may be reported on behalf of the physician who is providing care for a specific patient. Or they may be reported on behalf of the facility, such as the hospital or the clinic, the outpatient clinic, and the reason why we need to report for the facility is because they participate in any procedure, service, or treatment that was provided to the patient. So, for example, if we have a patient that's in the hospital brought into the operating room to have a surgical event, okay, so we are going to code for the surgeon, the physician who is actually performing the surgery, but why do we need to code for the hospital, the facility? Because the facility participated. The, first, the facility provided the surgical nurses and the rest of the support team. The hospital provided the use of the room and its electricity, the use of the equipment that's in the room, and the clean sheets. Okay, so they need to get reimbursement and they need to have it reported that they did their part with regard to any particular procedure or service. So the first procedure code and the one that you will uh, probably see most often are CPT codes. And these are used to report physician services at any and every location. So whether the physician is caring for a patient in his or her own office, or whether at uh, the patient's home, or in a nursing home, or in the hospital, it doesn't matter. If you are coding for the physician, 
you will be using CPT codes to report what that physician did for that patient. And if you are reporting for an outpatient care service, this might be an ambulatory surgery center, a walk-in clinic, or a hospital outpatient surgery center, or even a hospital emergency room, those are all considered outpatient care facilities. And if you are the coder for any of them, you will also use CPT codes to report their participation in the care. CPT codes are easy to recognize because they are always five numbers, numbers only, and five numbers all in a row. One, two, three, four, five, just like that. No dots, no letters of the alphabet. This code set, CPT, Current Procedural Terminology, it is, was created and is maintained every year by the American Medical Association, and the code set is updated every January 1st. ICD-10-PCS Procedure Coding System. ICD-10-PCS procedure codes are used only by hospitals for facility to report the facility part of services provided only to inpatients. And they are alphanumeric codes, always have seven characters. Always, always seven characters. Never any less, never any more. ICD-10-PCS is created and maintained by the National Center for Health Healthcare Statistics, and they are updated every year on October 1st, just like ICD-10-CM codes. HCPCS Level 2, that's H-C-P-C-S, which stands for Healthcare Common Procedure Coding System Level 2, are um, codes that I like to... I like to refer to them as the what else codes. What else that's not reportable at a CPT was provided to this patient during this encounter? It um, will uh, be used by either the facility or the provider. And these codes always have one letter to begin with and always four numbers, always together, no dots, no dashes, no anything. HCPCS Level 2 codes report things like transportation, for example, ambulance services, drugs administered by a healthcare professional, what was in that syringe or that IV bag, and durable medical equipment, such as a wheelchair or a cane, as well as prosthetics, orthotics, and supplies. Okay, I hope this helps you better understand which code set does what, and if you have any more questions, others do, please ask your instructor or post to the Q&A with the Professor Discussion Forum in this course.